Hi friends, today we will discuss about moving charges and magnetism chapter from physics syllabus of grade 12. It's an analysis mode is in competitive examination mode. So we will do the major concepts and expression for this chapter. Here the main concepts are coming like if a charged particle is moving through a magnetic field or electric field, what will be the force experienced by them? Or has it have any positive application in daily life? These all things are coming in the first part of the chapter. And then what will be the magnetic field created by a moving charge? So two concepts are there. Force experienced by a moving charge and magnetic field produced by a current element or a moving charge. These two concepts we are going to discuss. See, the very first concept you should know the force on a charged particle. In electric field, it will be like F is equal to Q into E in electric field. This equation we are getting from force is equal to charge into intensity of electric field E. F is equal to Q into E. And in magnetic field, if charge is at rest, there is no force. But if it is moving, then there will be experience a force. Fm force into magnetic field is equal to Q into V cross B where V is the speed of the particle and B is the magnetic field intensity. It's a vector quantity. So this force will be perpendicular to both speed and magnetic field. So velocity vector and magnetic field vector you should identify. And its magnitude Fm can be written as QVB sin theta. See, one question we can do here, like it says that an electron is moving along positive x-axis. A uniform electric field exists towards negative y-axis. What should be the direction of magnetic field of suitable magnitude so that net force on electron is zero? So here, we have to combine two fields are there, electric field as well as magnetic field. So net force zero means Fe plus Fm equal to zero on this charge. So it says that the electron is moving along positive x-axis. The electron is moving. So Fe that we have Qe is there plus Fm we have Q into V cross B is there. This total is equal to 0. So, Q in both cases charge you can take common and you can cut it to 0. So, here E vector plus V cross B is equal to 0. And it's clearly saying that here is moving along positive x axis the electron and uniform electric field is towards negative y axis. So, this E we can write like this way E into minus j negative y axis will be negative j and this magnetic field in that case is saying what should be the direction that we have to find actually and one more thing is given the charge is moving along a positive x axis so positive x axis means the v will be along i direction so, if you do it, just take the common magnitude here, then it is Vb into I cross N. Suppose I am putting N as the direction of B, then I cross N, that equal to 0. So, E along negative y axis, V, the speed along positive x axis is there. Now, if you resolve it, you can see that one, this I cross N, this should be, if it is equal both, this I cross N should be equal to J. If you resolve it, that means this N should be equal to K. So we are getting this direction of B should be along K, the positive Z axis. The options are A positive Z axis. That is the correct answer. I hope you got it. Now, one another question we can do. A beam of electron is moving with constant velocity in a region having electric and magnetic fields of strength 20 volt per meter and 0.5 T at right angles to the direction of motion of the electrons. What is the velocity of the electrons? That is the question. See, here also a combined electric and magnetic fields are there. 
electric and magnetic fields vectors so two concepts both magnitude is given and it says that is moving with a constant velocity so constant velocity means there is no deflection or net force equal to zero the particle is not accelerated so the net force should be equal to zero we'll write this as q e should be equal to q v b magnitude of both forces are equal on the charge so this cancels v velocity will be equal to e by b this concept is one important is called as velocity selector if a particle is moving undeflected or it will move with zero force on it if in a crossed electric and magnetic field if the ratio is equal to speed so we we have to find out e by b here electric field is given by 20 and magnetic field is given by 0.5 so that is equal to 20 by 0.5 that is nothing but 200 by 5 that is 40 meter per second the option d is correct answer i hope this concept is coming from combined electric and magnetic field concepts okay now we can move to what will be the force on a conductor if you keep in a magnetic field force on a conductor it is f equal to i into l cross b where i is the current passing through the conductor l is the length of the conductor and b is the magnetic field then force this f will be perpendicular to both length and magnetic field intensity so actually this length is considered in the direction of current so that way l we made as a vector so here also force is perpendicular to both current and magnetic field that is the meaning of this and if you resolve it i mean this magnitude f we can have it i l b sin theta that will be the magnitude of this force i l b sin theta will be the direction and the magnitude of the force one question we can say like this way it will be uh, the force the magnetic force per unit length on a wire carrying a current of 10 ampere and making an angle of 45 degree with the direction of a uniform magnetic field is 0 0.20 tesla is so you have to find the magnetic force per unit length how much will be force per unit length you have to find out f so this equation we can use it f by l is equal to i b sin theta is a direct equation current is given there we have current of maximum 10 ampere so it's equal to 10 into the magnetic field intensity b is given 0 0.2 and sin 45 sin 45 you know is 1 by root 2 so 10 into 0 0.2 into 1 by root 2 that is 2 by root 2 newton per meter so force per unit length so option b you can lock it 2 by root 2 newton per meter a simple equation so here force on a conductor f equal to i into l cross b so force is perpendicular to both length and the magnetic field intensity so force on a charge and force on a conductor now if this charge is moving through a magnetic field in any angle it can be can be in perpendicular direction we call as transverse or it can be make an angle acute angle less than 90 degree then what will be its path nature of the path followed by if it is passing perpendicular to the magnetic field then it will form a circular path and if it is moving an acute angle means an angle less than 90 degree it will be moving along a helix direction so a circular path and helix helical direction that both are possible in this type of motion so if it is passing along 90 degree and it's passing along helical line will be like this way if it's moving along angle less than 90 so theta is equal to 90 degree here and theta is equal to less than 90 degree these two possibilities are there for charge movement then what will be the radius question you can expect the radius of the charged particle if it is moving at 90 degree r is equal to m v by q b m is the mass of the particle v is the speed of the particle q charge and b the magnetic field intensity 
What will be the time period taken? How much time will it take to complete one rotation? T is equal to 2 pi m by QB. And angular frequency omega is equal to QB by m. Q. So, angular frequency and time period. You can have omega is equal to 2 pi by T. So, if you divide it by 2 pi, you will get this answer. QB by m. And the kinetic energy is equal to Q squared B square R squared divided by 2m. So, charge squared, magnetic field squared and R squared divided by 2m will give you the kinetic energy. Suppose it's not moving at 90 degree, an acute angle is there. Then, there will be some difference for the expression. It will be like this way. The time period and the radius, this all will change like this way. R will be equal to this one. Radius R will become mv sin theta by QB the radius mv sin theta by qb and there will be no change in time period because this does not depend upon the angle of direction so radius change will be there and the same you can concept in the kinetic energy also so please note that one in acute angles there will be mv sin theta by qb concept you have to consider we can check one question like this way a deuteron of kinetic energy 50 kilo electron volts is describing a circular orbit of radius 0.5 meter in a plane perpendicular to magnetic field B. And the kinetic energy of the proton that describe a circular orbit of radius 0.5 meter in the same plane with the same B is. So, kinetic energy equation we have Q square B square R square by 2m. Just you have to find the ratio. Here, the relation between deuteron and proton is the deuteron have twice the mass of proton. That is the difference there. So, you have to substitute that value also there. Then just take the ratio. The option 100 kilo electron volt, you will get the answer. Okay. Just find the ratio of these two equations. So, far we done about the charges and the field. Now, what will be the magnetic field due to a current carrying conductor? We have biot savart law. It says that dB is equal to this magnetic field due to a small current carrying element dB is proportional to intensity of current, the current element, the length of the conductor and inversely proportional to square of the distance between them. In sense dB is equal to mu0 by 4 pi. It's a constant where mu0 is a permittivity. I dl sin theta by r square. Mu0 has the value permeability of free space 4 pi into 10 raise to minus 7. So it depends upon the permeability. Now dB is equal to its vector form. Mu0 by 4 pi I dl cross r by r cube. Here dl cross r vector r if you put it then it will become r cube. And a normal magnitude I dl sin theta by r square you can put where theta is the angle between the current element and the direction to the point P. By using biot savart law, we have three applications. What will be the magnetic field due to a finite length of wire and an infinite length of wire and due to a circular coil? These three equations you should keep in mind. For a finite wire, BP will be mu0 i by 4 pi d into sin theta 1 plus sin theta 2. In this one, theta 1 and theta 2 are the angles made by the point P with the end of the conductor. So, suppose this is the wire, then is the point P. With the center, this angle is theta 1 and this angle is theta 2. And D is the distance from it. So, mu 0 i by 4 pi d into sin theta 1 plus sin theta 2, you can use the equation. And if it is infinite wire, then this theta 1 and theta 2 both will become 90 degree. Equation will become mu 0 i by 2 pi d. D is the distance of the point P from the wire. Due to circular coil of current carrying conductor, B is equal to, at a, along axial line, the point P, mu 0 n i r squared divided by 2 into x squared plus r square power 3 by 2, where this r is the radius of the loop, i is the current passing through it, n the number of turns. If more number of turns are there, you have to multiply with n, and x is the distance of the point P from the center of the loop. So, this vacation you can use for circular coil along the axial line. Then 3 you will get from as an application of biot savart law. So, biot savart law equation db is equal to mu 0 by 4 pi. Mu 0 is a permeability of free space. I dl sin theta by r square. 
Now, one another law we can use ambient circuit law to find the magnetic field due to or enclosed by a closed surface. In the form of Gauss's law, we done in electrostatics and in magnetic magnetism, we use ambient circuit law. Integral B dot DL, the closed magnetic field along a closed path is equal to mu zero times total current enclosed by the surface. Integral B dot DL is equal to mu zero I. By using ambient circuit law, we can find the magnetic field due to a current carrying conductor, a linear conductor, field due to a wire is equal to B, mu zero I by 2 pi R. R is the distance of the conductor to the point P, mu zero I by 2 pi R. Then for a solenoid, solenoid you know, is a coil bonded in the form of a cylindrical shape which gives a magnetic field when current passing through it. B is equal to mu zero n i, where this n is the number divided by length. Total number of turns per unit length is called small n, mu zero n i. And if the solenoid is bound in the form of a circular ring, we call it toroid, the magnetic field in the inner core of the toroid, B is equal to mu zero n i by 2 pi r. This r is the radius of the path, the circular ring. So toroid and solenoid, this both we get from bio and ambient circuit law. So these two applications gives you to find the magnetic field due to a current carrying conductor at a particular distance. Okay. Now, if we keep a current carrying coil on a magnetic field, like we kept an electric dipole in an external electric field, if we keep a current carrying coil in a magnetic field, you will experience a torque. This torque is given n i a b sin theta. n is the number of turns, i current passing through it, a the area of the coil, b is the magnetic field density and theta is the angle between plane of the coil. I mean this area vector a and the magnetic field intensity b. n i a current into area is magnetic moment m so it can be written as m b sin theta also. So if you keep a coil in an external magnetic field it will experience a torque. Because equal and opposite force will be there on each sides. We will get this concept torque. Then, if an electron is moving in an orbit around a nucleus, like hydrogen atom, like that, we can have this magnetic moment of this revolving electron. This mu L is equal to E L divided by 2 M E, where E is a charge. L is the angular momentum. Angular momentum L is equal to, you know, MVR. M is the mass of electron. To the minimum value, least value of this magnetic moment is known as Bohr magneton. Its value is 9.27 into 10 raised to minus 24 ampere per meter square. The Bohr magneton. So for revolving electron around a nucleus, there will be a magnetic moment. Is there an expression for that? If this torque acting on a coil can be implemented in a device called a moving coil galvanometer, in order to check the presence and direction of current flowing through the circuit, we can make use of this galvanometer. Moving coil galvanometer works on the principle that current passing through this coil is always directly proportional to the deflection produced, I proportional to theta. Actually, equation of this. If you make it a constant, you can introduce I equal to K by N A B, where K is a torsional constant, N is the number of turns, A the area of the coil, B the magnetic field into theta is a deflection. This galvanometer you can convert into a ammeter also and voltmeter also. So that you could come across the terms sensitivity. The current sensitivity theta by I is equal to N A B by K. So how to increase the current sensitivity or more sensitive, you can increase the number of turns, you can increase the area of the coil, you can increase the magnetic field density and you can decrease the torsional constant of the material. And voltage sensitivity is given by theta by V, the voltage V is equal to NAB by K into R, R is the resistance. The voltage sensitivity you can increase not by number of turns. If number of turns you increase, resistance also increase. So it won't have much effect on this. You can change the area and magnetic field intensity. K you can decrease. Voltage sensitivity is there. If you consider, if you connect a small resistance, S, a shunt resistance across a galvanometer in parallel, then it may be converted to an ammeter. 
Galvanometer is a device which have very high resistance. So in order to reduce the resistance, we can use a shunt resistance across parallel to a galvanometer. S equal to Ig by I minus Ig into G. This equation gives you the value of shunt resistance. Ig is the current through galvanometer. I is the total current and G is the resistance of the galvanometer. And if you connect a heavy resistance in series to the galvanometer, it will become a voltmeter. The value of resistance to be connected R is equal to V by IG minus G. The galvanometer constant. Resistance and V is the volt. Maximum how much you want it and IG is the current through it. Galvanometer. So these equations will give you the concept of conversion of galvanometer into ammeter and voltmeter. So here we discussed about the magnetic field due to a current carrying conductor at different distances and conductor may be of different shapes. Then its application we used force on the coil. If you make the conduct in the form of a coil and keep in the magnetic field, we can make use as a galvanometer inside. So galvanometer concept also we got through it. Now you know about earth magnetic field. So regarding the components of earth magnetism, we are going to discuss what is earth magnetism or which all components you should take care about earth magnetism. For the concept device, we have a concept that whenever you keep a bar magnet freely suspend in anywhere, it will always align in geographic north-south direction. It is believed that it is because the earth have a magnetism in which the geographic earth, north and south poles have magnetic south and north poles like the magnetic south pole is there in geographic north hence the bar magnet is aligning always towards the south so that way it is done and the total resultant magnetic field and the horizontal component of earth field the angle between them is called angle of dip theta will call us in terms of that, we can have the horizontal component of earth magnetic field. BH is equal to B cos theta. B is the total magnetic field at a place. And theta is the angle between total and the horizontal component. That is called angle of dip. Theta, we can have BV by BH. Where BV is the vertical component of earth magnetic field. B sin theta we can write. So by knowing theta and B, you can find. Because sometimes the question also correct. But one question like this way. At a given place on Earth's surface, the horizontal component of Earth magnetic field is 2 into 10 raised to minus 5 Tesla, and resultant magnetic field is 4 into 10 raised to minus 5 Tesla. The angle of dip at this place is. So it's a direct question. You have to find the angle of dip. Del. So the total magnetic field and the horizontal component is given there so b is equal to 4 into 10 raised to minus 5 tesla this is the total result and the horizontal component is given bh is equal to 2 into 10 raised to minus 5 tesla so we have to find the theta cos theta you can have is equal to bh by b and theta is equal to cos inverse bh by b. What is bh? 2 into 10 raised to minus 5 by b is 4 into 10 raised to minus 5. Cancel it, become cos inverse 1 by 2. Cos inverse 1 by 2 is 60 degree. So the angle of dip is 60 degree. A direct question is actually, so good, take care about angle of dip one concept. So angle of dip is the angle made by the resultant magnetic field with the horizontal component of earth's magnetic field. The equation is like this you can solve it. Now regarding the magnetic dipole that means the magnetic bar magnet we can consider as a magnetic dipole. It will act similar to electric dipole. For an electric dipole, we calculate the electric field along axial line, along equatorial line, the torque on the dipole. Similarly, a magnetic dipole, a bar magnet can be considered like this way. Field along the axial line of a bar magnet B is equal to mu0 by 4 pi. Mu0 is the permeability of free space. 2 mR by R squared minus L square whole power 2. So M, here M is the magnetic dipole moment that is given magnetic pole strength into length of the bar magnet. M into 2L. 
as a mandatory deployment of a bar magnet. Along equatorial line, B is equal to M0 by 4 pi into M by R square per L square, all power 3 by 2. Uh, M is a magnetic dipole moment itself. And if you keep this in an external magnetic field, then torque tau is equal to MB sin theta. Magnetic moment into B into sin theta, angle between. It looks like similar to the electric field also. And if you keep it on a free magnetic field, the time period of the dipole will be, if it is oscillated simple harmonically, T is equal to 2 pi root I by MB. This I is the moment of inertia of the dipole, I by MB. Bar magnet, the four cases. Okay. Now, regarding electric flux, we know that the electric field lines passing normal to a surface per unit area, electric flux with them. Similarly, the magnetic field lines passing through a closed surface, we can do by using Gauss's law here. Gauss's law in magnetism says that since magnetic field lines are closed loops, the phi, the flux passing through any closed surface will be equal to zero. This is magnetic flux in a closed surface. Sigma b dot ds delta s is equal to zero, the Gauss's law. Now we can discuss about some basic terms, terms of the magnetic materials. So some magnetic basic terms we can go through. Based on that we can distinguish the materials, magnetic materials on three headings mainly. Diamagnetism, paramagnetism and ferromagnetism. So the magnetic properties we can discuss like this way. One term magnetic intensity. It is B represented by mu into H. H is the magnetization intensity. Intensity we can call as mu into H. Now, intensity of magnetization I is magnetic moment per unit volume M by V and the susceptibility chi is equal to I by H. I is the intensity of magnetization and H is the magnetic intensity and permeability mu is equal to B by H where mu r relative permeability can write mu by mu zero for free space mu zero value we have 4 pi into 10 raised to minus 7 that is the value of mu zero clear then Curie's law which gives you about the nature of the magnetic material as the temperature increases a paramagnetic material will lose magnetic nature and a ferromagnetic material also ferromagnetic material will become paramagnetic and paramagnetic will become diamagnetic material so what is diamagnetic material a material which is repelled by an external magnetic field is called a diamagnetic material and which is strongly attracted is called ferromagnetic material and paramagnetic is half a nature in between means slightly they attracted towards a stronger magnetic field so diamagnetism paramagnetism and ferromagnetic materials we have to get the concept based on the curious law we can do it now the materials have susceptibility which is positive larger positive based on that we can distinguish it permeability which is smaller value bigger value based on that we can distinguish it based on like that <coughs> we can make like some ideas if a small negative value is there for susceptibility then that is a diamantic material smaller positive paramagnetic larger positive ferromagnetic material so sometimes question you can expect in terms of that also based on this concept so please make sure about these equations these all are the major terms and concepts from the chapter moving charges and earth magnetism i hope you enjoyed it so please watch it clearly and subscribe our youtube channel thank you all for watching me bright education center medical and engineering and runs coaching center hilal area doha qatar for further inquiries contact 3060679